I'm Beverly Kirk with the Global Health Policy Center here with Dr. Steve Morrison. He's Senior Vice President and Director of the Global Health Policy Center here at CSIS, and we're talking about the ongoing Ebola crisis. Now, African leaders are meeting with President Obama here in Washington this week. How has the conversation about Ebola impacted the summit? Well, first of all, uh, the actual holding of the summit here, I think, has helped sharpen up the response, the U.S. response and the African response to the crisis. And what I mean by that is because it was unfolding in the immediate roll-up mm -hmm. to this and because you had uh, the two, Dr. Brantley and Nancy Whitebull uh, medevaced from Liberia to Atlanta, it became very important for the president and for the CDC executive director, Tom Frieden, to get out in front and explain to the American public what was happening. And so I believe what happened was that, as a result, was that people were better informed and, the, and uh, around the need to be vigilant and that this would be managed and was safe and what was happening in the region. Second is that President Conte came to the summit from Guinea mm -hmm. and he and senior officials from uh, Liberia and Sierra Leone were engaging in intensive uh, consultations and planning in moving forward with the uh, surge uh, program mm -hmm. of support. Mm -hmm. Those are very uh, those are very positive things. Third, the summit itself, there was a little bit of irritation and evidence of uh, some of the um, uh, le heads of state uh, worried that uh, overcharacterizing this as a runaway catastrophe was going to dent the reputation and image of Africa. Uh, President Kikwete from Tanzania, President Macky Sall from Senegal, President Conte himself, they, they, were, they were weighing in at different points to say, well, yes, it's a very serious situation, but, and, uh, and, and that was a little bit at odds, frankly, with, with the continued very strong assertions being made by uh, Tom Frieden and by Margaret Chan and others that this remains a very, very grave risk of further expansion and that this is a, a cr true uh, uh, region-wide crisis. And that's not the only controversy. There's been some controversy about the fact that the two U.S. aid workers were given this experimental drug as treatment. Talk yeah. about that. Yes, there's a serum that has uh, not been approved, tested or approved for human use. It's a serum that has, it's a cocktail of antibodies uh, that have been developed uh, in response specifically to Ebola. And so uh, these two uh, individuals who got sick in Liberia and who were at risk of dying requested that they be uh, able to acquire uh, uh, vials of this and, and those were shipped on an emergency basis into Liberia. Um, those two individuals, their condition has improved somewhat. Um, whether it's attributed to this or not, we do not know. Um, the, 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 the serum, as I said, it's experimental. It's only produced in very small volumes. Mm -hmm. But this set off a debate around equity and issues of, well, uh, if, if these are available on an emergency basis, even if they're not fully vetted and tested, shouldn't they be given out to, to other people, mm -hmm. uh, either other health workers or poor peasants and, and others who are getting sick mm -hmm. and, um, and, and, and dying to, uh, to try and raise the probability of survival mm -hmm. or to help protect uh, uh, people that are on the front lines. And uh, that has ignited a debate around whether uh, the, uh, the agencies that approve these should accelerate, whether there should be a compassion uh, 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 clause that allows for suspending some of the normal requirements. Against that is the question around protecting the safety and, uh, of citizens and the efficacy. And there's a, uh, there's a good reason for being very cautious. Mm -hmm in introducing these, these drugs if we're not really sure what the side effects and what the efficacy are. So it's a big debate that is now opened. And what's the latest from the region in terms of, of the spread, the numbers, the uh, continuing crisis? It continues to grow uh, and, and, and the developments that are underway are mixed. On the one hand, we're in, the, we're in a phase of a, of a very very rapid mobilization mm -hmm. on multiple on multiples levels. There's new money coming in. Mm 
Mm -hmm. um, the World Bank, Jim Kim, stepped forward with $200 million commitment. The Africa Development Bank, $60 million. Critical inputs for salaries, for commodities, for supporting transport and the like. You have um, uh, the WHO coming mm -hmm. forward, Margaret Chan and the World Health Organization with a $100 million um, program. You have USAID and CDC mm -hmm. committing uh, additional support, and including 50 U.S. personnel. Right. Um, so pulling those pieces together and getting that moving. There's also discussion, should the U.S. military be providing mm -hmm. some support in terms of its lift capacities, air and, and by land, its ability to, to, to mobilize in these crises. The U.S. military has distinguished itself repeatedly in West Africa in crises over the last 25 years at, at mobilizing and operating in these environments. That's under active discussion. On the negative side, we have secondary transmission uh, in, in Nigeria from the uh, uh, American. The patient that, that died there. That, that died there, that left Liberia and wound up in Lagos, died in a hospital, infected a number of other people. Uh, t one has died, six or seven are infected. Uh, that's a dangerous, that's a very dangerous thought. Mm -hmm. There is a, uh, a, a mobilization of military and police, both in the urban environments that are infected in, in Sierra Leone and, 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 um, and, and, and Liberia and Guinea, but also in the remote uh, areas where much of the transmission is concentrated, where those three countries come together in an area called the Parrot's Beak. And so you're seeing a mobilization coming from, from those governments. Whether that is effective or not, we'll see. They are going to need protective equipment. They're going to need good training. They're gonna need support. Um, and, uh, and there's a fear, obviously, within the region mm -hmm. that you're going to see transmission into other neighboring states, Cote d'Ivoire, Ivory Coast, mm -hmm. Senegal, Benin or Togo. Mm -hmm. Nigeria is, of course, a colossal uh, threshold that has partially you know, been passed now. So we're in a phase where this continues to, to, to move forward mm -hmm. with the transmission. We still have resistance. We still have stigma. We still have uh, a lack of trust at a social level. Um, it still remains to be seen whether the militaries can carry out these duties. And we have this big mobilization that needs to be operationalized on an urgent basis. All right. Dr. Steve Morrison, thank you. Thank you.